Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's explore three practical insights from Marketing Made Simple by Donald Miller. This book is important because a business can fail even if it manages to create a truly great product or service. And that's because it's not enough just to create something that people value or that people want. We must also create an effective strategy for attracting and converting customers. Now, unfortunately, far too many entrepreneurs believe that their product or their service is an exception. So they believe that their solution is so great that it'll just sell itself and they don't need to worry about putting together a marketing strategy. And unfortunately, this almost always ends poorly and they're left confused as to why their product or service wasn't able to build momentum. Marketing Made Simple explains how to build an effective sales funnel. It breaks down the three stages of building customer relationships relationships, and it explains how to build the five marketing components that you need to not only attract potential customers, but to also convert them. So let's dive into three of my favorite insights from the book, beginning with insight number one, the three stages of a relationship. A great sales funnel should address each of the natural stages for building a relationship. This includes curiosity, enlightenment, and commitment. And these tend to be the same stages that we go through when we're forming a personal relationship with somebody. And so the idea here is we wanna take this exact same process and fit it to our business so we can guide potential customers through these stages and eventually reach the third stage of commitment where they buy our product or our service. So let's go through each one individually to get a better sense of how we might accomplish this. Stage number one is curiosity. And the idea here is before somebody wants to take the time to learn more about your product or service, they must first be curious about it in some way. And this tends to be a snap judgment that people make when they first engage with your product or service around whether or not it can help them in some meaningful way. So they're quickly making a subconscious choice whether to explore the idea further or to discard it and move on. And typically, this decision is based on our base needs. So things like our need for survival, happiness, relationships, and gathering resources so that not only can we survive, but we can also thrive. And so initially, you really need to find a way to make your product or service appeal to somebody's curiosity. That's stage number one. Once they're curious to learn more, they move into stage number two, which is enlightenment. And the idea here is they wanna learn more about exactly what you offer and more specifically, how it can help them thrive or survive, how it can help them solve a problem or move forward in their life in a way that is important and valuable to them. So for example, when somebody lands on a product website, they might look at a headline and decide that they're curious to learn more. And now they might start to explore the website to find out more about exactly how the product or service can help them. So they're seeking to enlighten themselves about the product or service. And this, of course, is a very necessary stage before they make the commitment of deciding to buy the product or the service. So this is a very natural progression and it happens in a specific order. First, they are curious, then they seek to enlighten themselves, and finally, they're ready to make a commitment. Now, the book points out two common reasons why businesses fail to guide customers to the commitment stage. The first is they ask for the sale too early. So they don't wait for customers to progress through the first two stages. They immediately ask for the sale and it's too early. The second reason is that they never ask for the sale. So even after somebody might engage with their website, be curious about the product, enlighten themselves about the product or service, the company fails to ask for the sale, to make it easy for customers to make that that commitment to buy the product or the service. So with that in mind, let's continue on to insight number two, the marketing made simple checklist. A sales funnel is the foundation of an effective marketing strategy. 
It's what we use to guide potential customers through the three stages for building a relationship. So the book covers how to construct the five marketing components that you need to guide customers through this process. This includes number one, a one-liner, number two, a website, number three, lead generators, number four, nurture email campaigns, and number five, sales email campaigns. These elements work together in order to move people through that three-step process. So let's quickly cover all five of them so that you get a rough sense of how this process works. Number one is a one-liner, and the idea here is if you're gonna create curiosity, around your product or service, you need a very succinct way to explain exactly how you can help someone solve a problem or meet an important need. And so right out of the gate, we draw in curiosity by quickly and succinctly describing how we can help. That's the power of a one-liner. And this is something that we're gonna come back to here in a minute. The second component is a website. And the idea here is once somebody is curious, once they wanna learn more about your business, a website allows them to educate themselves about exactly what you do and how you can help solve their problem. So this is very much under the enlightenment stage. The third component is lead generators. And the idea here is when somebody becomes a little bit more interested in your business, you wanna have a simple way to capture their contact information so you can continue to follow up with them and continue to build the relationship. So a lead generator might include something like a free PDF report or a free video series, or a free webinar that allows them to enlighten themselves around your product or service, while at the same time giving you an opportunity to capture their email address. So a simple way to think about this would be asking for somebody's phone number when you're trying to initiate a relationship. It's not a complete commitment, you're not asking them to marry you, but you are asking them to provide their phone number so that you can follow up and potentially take them out on a date. And so likewise, here, it's not just about capturing their contact information with an email address, you're also seeking to create value for them. So when you give them a free PDF report or a video series, you're looking to demonstrate that you can help solve a problem. So it's very important that whatever you're offering at this stage actually helps them move forward and begin to solve the underlying problem problem that your product can provide a solution around. The fourth component is nurture email campaigns. The idea here is people aren't always ready to buy immediately after learning about your product or service. So what we wanna do is we wanna send them regular, valuable emails so that not only are we continuing to nurture the relationship, but we're continuing to have our brand be present in their life. So whenever they see an email in their inbox, they not only recognize that we're trying to create value for them, but they're also reminded that we exist and when they're ready to buy, they're that much more likely to engage with our brand. The fifth and final component is sales email campaigns. And this is where we simply ask for the sale. We let them know that our product or service can help them, and we ask them to make a commitment by buying our product or signing up for our service or engaging with our business in some other meaningful way. Now, a lot of businesses, as I hinted at earlier, tend to be a little bit soft when it comes to asking for the sale. They don't wanna be pushy, they don't want to be too aggressive, and so they fail to ultimately ask the customer to buy. And what this does, as explained in the book, is it signals a lack of confidence in our product or our service. Because at this point, we have to keep in mind, somebody has shown curiosity in what it is that we do, they've enlightened themselves around exactly how our product or service can benefit them. If they're on our email list, it means they picked up one of our lead generators and showed further interest. So at this point, we've really earned the right to ask for the sale. And of course, this doesn't mean they're going to purchase, but we should at least give them a very clear opportunity to make a decision about whether or not our product or service is for them. So in summary, our one-liner is about creating curiosity. Our website, lead generators, and nurture email campaigns are all designed to allow customers to enlighten themselves about whether or not our product or service is right for them. And finally, our sales email campaign 
asks for a commitment. We ask for the sale and we take customers to the third and final stage. And of course, at any point in the entire process, we have clear and visible buy buttons on the website. So if they wanna shortcut the process or if they're ready to make a commitment that much faster, they can do so at any time. Let's continue on to insight number three, how to create a powerful one-liner. The book goes into detail on each of the five components in terms of how to put them together and how they work together to create an effective sales funnel. But here, I just wanna focus in on the first component, the one-liner, because arguably, it provides the greatest leverage as it's at the very beginning of the process. It's what creates initial curiosity in your product or service. And again, the idea behind a one-liner is to succinctly state exactly how your product or service can create value for customers so that they have this initial curiosity. Now, a one-liner is made up of three components, the problem, the solution, and the result. So we start off by articulating the problem. We wanna hook their attention by raising their awareness around a very clear problem that we can help them resolve. Now, in all likelihood, your product or your service solves a number of problems that customers might have. But for the sake of clarity and brevity, we wanna select one very common overarching problem that we're seeking to solve for customers. So rather than getting stuck in the weeds, we need to identify one overarching problem that ultimately your product or service can help to resolve. So for example, when it comes to my content, I might describe the problem as something like, Many entrepreneurs feel overwhelmed when starting or growing a business. That is a clear problem. Many entrepreneurs face this. This is a common problem. I'm not getting stuck in the minor details. I'm just describing something that is very common to entrepreneurs that again are either trying to start or grow a business. That's the problem. The second part is the solution. And here we need to connect that problem with a very specific solution that we can help provide. So it's not just here's the solution, but rather naming that solution using either our brand or the brand of our product or our service so that they connect the problem with our particular solution, not just a generic solution. So for example, again, using myself as an example, Rick Kettner distills helpful advice and proven tactics from the best business books. So I first introduce my name, which is what I use as my brand when publishing content, and I articulate how I can help to solve their problem. The third part is the result. And this is where we really clarify exactly what the final result will be after they engage with our product or with our service, or in this case, with my content. Now, what we're looking to achieve here is we wanna resolve the tension that was created when we first introduced the problem. So we brought up the problem to hook their attention, to raise their awareness around this problem that exists in their life. And here with the third part, we really wanna resolve that tension completely so that they're no longer thinking about the problem, they're now focused on how our product or service will resolve that completely. So again, using myself as an example, you might say something like, entrepreneurs can confidently take action to move their business forward. And when we put it all together, we get many entrepreneurs feel overwhelmed when starting or growing a business. Rick Kettner distills helpful advice and proven tactics from the best business books so you can confidently take action to move your business forward. Of course, the book provides much more advice and many more examples of how you can put together your own one-liner, and not just a quick example like this, but actually refine your own messaging so that you can create curiosity around your product or your service. But those are three of my favorite insights from the book. Let me quickly recap all three for you. Number one, the three stages of a relationship. Number two, the marketing made simple checklist, and number three, how to create a powerful one-liner. 
Of course, there is so much more covered in the book that we simply cannot tackle in this short format. Much more advice around how to create an effective sales funnel and how to build out all five of the components. So if you're interested in improving your overall marketing and making it easier to attract and convert customers, then I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of Marketing Made Simple by Donald Miller. That's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you're interested in more content like this in the future, then I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to connecting with you again in the future.